Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the fourth episode of Landscape North. Today, I have the pleasure of sitting here with Heather Fleming. So, Heather, before we get going into the questions, maybe you could just sort of give a little bit of background of who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, welcome, Chris, and thank, thank, you. thank you for having me. And uh, so, as you said, my name is Heather Fleming. I'm a senior uh, landscape architect and urban design uh, consultant, and I have uh, about 13 years of experience in the industry to date. Wow, that's great. Well, we, we talked about a couple of questions that um, discussed to be on the show, so we'll just dive right in if that's okay. Sure. All right, so the first one is, what brought you to working in the landscape architecture field? Well, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a curvilinear path for me. I uh, studied a few different disciplines, started off with engineering, and, uh, and then I moved into community design and planning. Right. And, uh, and then I've sort of landed through my work experience into landscape architecture and urban design. Uh, so what drew me to it is, uh, so I'm originally from Nova Scotia, and I studied and worked there initially, where I did a lot of master planning and campus design and waterfront developments. And, uh, and then I moved on to Toronto, where it uh, gave me a lot more broad experience in the urban right. design field. Sure. Mm. Perfect. Okay, so what challenge have what challenges have you faced, or and do you anticipate for the industry? Well, personally, uh, I've faced uh, some of the challenges of being misunderstood in the industry. Right. So, uh, landscape architecture is getting better known, but it is still misunderstood even by seasoned professionals. Right. That, uh, at least every six months or so, someone will say, "Oh, you're a landscaper," and uh, right. you know, and then I have to try and correct them and, and not be offended yeah. and, uh, and explain that we have a lot of more expertise than. Than just softscape and planting design. Right. Uh, some of the other challenges are that uh, you know, sort of related to that, is some dominant colleagues. So if we're on a, a large team with uh, like a streetscape project or or a large infrastructure project, a lot of times engineers and architects may misunderstand or or not understand that we have certain tasks that are valuable to the project, and they will sort of start taking over and dominating uh, their role in the project, right. where we start losing. Uh, a voice sometimes right. on, on what our contribution is. Um, so an example of that might be where we're trying to lay out a streetscape and we have a uh, furnishing zone and tree zone and uh, you know a public realm and all of a sudden utilities and uh, architectural features and other form making kind of takes over. Got it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge um, for sure. And I guess some other challenging uh, issues that we've experienced, which any industry does, but uh, Descoping and uh, value engineering, right. they get hit pretty hard with yeah. uh, landscape architecture first, right. in my experience, because it's one of the easiest things to cut out of a project. So uh, yeah, you do a lot of yeah. done a lot of work on the front end That's to it. make it very attractive and functional, and yeah. then the budget gets cut, and you're the first one on the show. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to implementation, and right. they're looking at where we, where can we save budget. Structural engineering usually isn't the way to go. No. Like they have to yeah. keep that. Yeah. So they're going to start cutting trees, cutting plants, uh, cutting quality of, of paving, right. uh, and so on. Okay. So it's, that's a bit of a challenge for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how does your work in transportation infrastructure relate to landscape architecture? You kind of led into it a little bit from the last the last mm -hmm. sentence, but but just a little bit more detail on that would be great for our for our listeners. Sure. Yeah. No. It's uh it's been interesting a uh, um, challenge for me to to kind of move myself through the industry of landscape architecture while still uh, getting involved in the kind of projects that I want to work on. Right. So I'm particularly very interested in transit and transportation and mobility. And so the way I use landscape architecture with that is through working on projects that are corridor design, uh, grade separations, okay. such as bridges. Right. So we're doing a lot of grading and uh, uh, bioengineering where we're using mm. landscaping as, uh, as the retention instead of retaining walls in okay. some cases. Um, and we're also working on a lot of items like green roofs and blue roofs okay. where water is either treated and uh, dealt with with plant material or it's retained and, and released into the softscape yeah. through other Yeah, the, the green roof industry is really getting some, mm -hmm. some strength behind it for sure. Yeah, and the yeah. technology behind it is, is pr providing us with thinner media right. and uh, lighter grow growing media that we can actually apply to more roofs. Um, some of the other uh, ways that we use it are uh, through um, you know, producing commercial frontages and uh, right. complete streets where we're looking at a corridor from building front all the way to the center where the vehicles are moving. Okay. So we're thinking of it from the perspective of, of you know, people walking and biking sure. and, and driving and yeah. taking transit. And uh, so I'm looking at a lot of projects from a whole holistic point of view. Nice. So. Okay. It's a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so where do you find inspiration for your projects? 
For my projects, I find inspiration everywhere. I, I love to travel and, uh, and sail. read and sail. And uh, so literally anything might strike me as uh, an inspiration. So it might even be a matter of some wind chimes and I'm realizing, you know what? Yeah, that's there's a sequence mm. to that. And okay. there's there's a way that, you know, people are, are moving through a, a room and they, they react to certain items. And uh, so we, um, you know, we as landscape architects or myself, I, I get inspired by a lot of things like okay. um, even one project uh, where I was doing a roof, a green roof design, uh, the, the, the information that uh, needed to be conveyed was something that had to be visible from a cruise ship. Really? So it was, you know, it was quite a far distance away. That, and, that, that uh, in the Maritimes or here? In the Maritimes okay. in Halifax Seaport. Nice. Okay. And uh, so, oddly enough, uh, a Blackberry screensaver actually <laughs> fit the bill. It had a beautiful flowing oh, pattern okay. of different colors and uh, and it was something that we could superimpose on a roof that would be visible uh, from far away. And then the, so. the trees and the vegetation from the color standpoint. That's that right. Design. Yeah, That's different, great different colors of sedum, different types of plant material. That, right. that, yeah. But yeah, the inspiration came from a phone. Well, so there you, go. you just never know. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. um, and then what upcoming changes do you anticipate um, in the industry? Um, the biggest one is technology. Okay. So technology in software that we're using, but also technology of products. So software development for the design element. Uh, well, there's software in uh, in my designing, okay. uh, but then there's also software in the project itself. We're okay. getting that smart yeah. features. Right. So we're getting cameras that are able to, uh, through AI programming, detect if there's an unsafe environment happening oh. uh, through people moving in right. a certain okay. way. Uh, and there's you know there's of course now Wi-Fi being included on a lot of sites and, and charging stations and emergency phone points. Um, so technology is, is becoming more of a landscape feature that uh, people may not have thought about 10 years ago. Sure. Uh, and, and also um, the quality of products is, is amazing now. We have right. pervious paving and, and porous paving that we can use and uh, you know really amazing facade and, and wall features that we can use now. And right. Lighting is, is becoming more and more affordable and um, you know clients that may or may not have considered lighting in the past are, are more apt to put it in now that it's the LEDs right. and the a lot more efficiency from an operating cost, yeah. yeah. Makes so sense. in general, technology is, is definitely driving uh, some of the future of landscape architecture. Um, some of the other things that uh, are changing are the way projects are procured. So, okay. um, you know, a lot of people are familiar with design build or design bid build, but then there are also some other projects that are AFP process or, um, like alternate financing okay. procurement and uh, you know DBFOM, so develop, <clears throat> design, uh, build and finance, operate and maintain. Okay. So essentially, we have these consortiums that are taking on a project and designing and planning it all the way through building it and then operating it for maybe thirty years. Okay. So it's it's sort of changing the industry in that sure. the designers now have to think about well now we have to maintain it. So right. it's, it's designed becoming, to be. How we're going to maintain this down the road? Yeah, and it's becoming more of a need to really focus on innovating and creating something that's resilient. Perfect. So it's it's interesting. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. Now, one question that I would ask for you is, what questions do you have for our audience? And if if you're watching this, if you've got a question, if you got an answer for Heather's question that she's going to tell now, then please put it in the comments so that we can get a little bit of feedback back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, what what question would you ask the community about landscape architecture? Um, well, I hadn't really thought about that actually, but what I would ask others about landscape architecture, but I guess uh, one good question would be, how do you want to get involved with landscape architecture? If you're not a landscape architect yourself, how do you see your purpose in it other than being a, a community stakeholder showing up to a planning meeting? Cool. Great. Thanks Great. so much. Thanks Super. so much for having me. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.